Okay, it's recording now, so you can start. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Let me see if I can bring up the chat box here before we get started. Okay. How is everyone doing today? Interesting day in the market. We gapped down in the market. We rallied. We dropped. We rallied again. I think we're going to have a very, very volatile couple of days in the market here going into the end of the week. Today's Wednesday, big number out on Friday, which is the unemployment number. So it's a good time to talk about trading gaps. And today I'm going to talk about crude, specifically trading commodities. That's a topic for today or one of the topics for today. And I will tell you right now, sometimes I trade crude symbols. Sometimes I don't because every single day I'm looking for the best thing to pick to trade. But I'm going to talk about crude today, and this is very timely because I speak about the economy and inflation when I talk on TV. And right now, obviously, we're in a period where gas prices have gone up. Crude prices have gone up. So you've noticed that if you drive. Now, I live in Manhattan, so I don't drive. <laughs> but I've noticed specific specifically that food prices have gone up. And really, we're in a period of inflation for lots of products. If you have questions today, you can email me at melissa@thestockswoosh.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, or Skype. So, first thing I'm going to ask you today is, would you like to make money trading? I would think that all of you would say yes. Obviously, trading is fun. Pressing the buttons is fun. But this isn't like a computer game or a video game. When you're trading, in order to take a position, you're risking your own hard-earned money. So you want to be successful. You want to make money. I don't look at my trades like a crapshoot, like a 50-50. I look at something and I'm all in or I don't do it at all. I never look at something like a 50-50, okay? So I either have 100% conviction or no conviction when I take a trade. And I really look at my time as time as money, you know? So I'm spending uh, time with you here today, valuable time with you here today to try to teach you something that you can hopefully take away from today and give you my opinions on the market and overall what I think about this economy and where we could be headed. You know, when you take the time out of your life to trade, right now people are still working from home, unfortunately because of COVID and the new Delta variant. You know, you can trade on the side, but the nice thing about trading is the market is open only from 9.30 to 4. So whether you want to trade commodities, whether you want to trade stocks, whether you want to trade ETFs, there's some crude stocks we're going to talk about here today, you can train just for an hour in a day. You don't have to train six and a half hours the entire time the market is open. And that's also a nice thing about trading right now too, because you could work your full-time job if you're working from home and train an hour a day on the side. And again, it depends where you are in the world right now. Um, again, I'm in New York, so I'm in Eastern time zone. The market hours are 9.30 to 4 Eastern time zone, but depending where you are, you might be early in the morning or if you're in California, or it might be later in the day if you're across the world, across the pond. But ultimately trading is about results. We want results. And one of the interesting things about trading commodities and specifically today what we're gonna talk about is crude because I think this is a newsworthy topic right now is that crude can be very volatile to trade. Now, why is that good? Because you can like make a lot of money if you get something, if it moves big in the right direction. Anytime that you trade though, you have to get something in the right direction. It goes without saying. So if you're going long, you've got to get the move up. If you're shorting, you've got to get the move down or have selling come into it if you're short. So volatility is actually good if you're a trader and crude can be very volatile. And I expect we're gonna to continue to see this at least into the winter months. Now let's just talk very basic here about what is a commodity. A commodity is a basic good used in commerce that is interchangeable with other goods of the same type. The quality of a given commodity may differ slightly, again, depending on what company you happen to get, gas or oil, but it is essentially uniform across producers. And we're going to look at a couple charts today of different producers. So crude is a commodity. Again, we're in a period right now where costs have gone up. What is one of the reasons for that? Well, uh, you know, OPEC is in charge of the supply of what's happening right now. And when the Biden administration took over in early 2021, they decided to shut down um, the Keystone pipeline. So that put a crunch on gasoline prices. Gasoline prices went up when that occurred initially at the beginning of 2021 or was uh, early in the year. The USO is the symbol for the oil ETF, if you want to pull it up. I just clipped back here a chart going back the last few months. This is an ETF, okay? You can look at this, you can trade this. Um, again, I prefer to trade specific stocks if I'm doing something. 
rather than ETFs, but I will trade ETFs occasionally. Although I will say most of the ETFs that I trade will be something like the SPY, uh, which is the ETF for the S&P or the QQQs or the diamonds, which is the ETF for the Dow. So, but if you like to trade ETFs, you certainly can. All right, so USO, if you wanna pull it up as a daily chart, is the ETF for oil. And again, you can see here just in the last couple of days, today, today is the six. I have the chart in here from yesterday. You can see we had a lift. Okay, this was October 5th. And actually we've had a big lift pretty much really from this last week. This went inverse really of the market. So the market fell all last week, okay? We had a big drop off on Monday. In fact, let's look at Monday here in crude. Monday was the fourth. Look at this big jump we had on Monday in crude. So we had a falling market on Monday. If you remember, we fell off a cliff, really. Crude was up last two days. Today's Wednesday, okay? One of the most interesting charts and one of the charts I like the most in this bucket, okay, of crude stocks is Chevron. This is one of the strongest charts out there. Now, again, this had a rally as well the last two days. But I think if you were looking to possibly hold something, get in something, take a long position in something, this is really the strongest chart that I've seen in this sector of all of the ones that we're looking at. And again, we're going to look at a couple different day charts um, in this sector as well. Even still, I like this even more than just the overall ETF. Okay, here's the rally in this. Now, again, this is this is a little bit pricey. You can see here where this closed yesterday around 105 and change. Uh, so this is more expensive. But again, really nice rally in here, really nice lift, continued higher, and again, was opposite what was going on in the overall market. So we're in a period right now where we have rising gas prices. It depends where you live in the country, what you're paying for gas. Um, again, in California, it's extremely expensive. I'm from Pennsylvania. I noticed gas prices when I was there about two weeks ago. Um, you know, it was well over three fifty a gallon. So, so it's costing, costing people more money to fill up their tank. tank. And again, there's many, many reasons for that. Supply, demand, shutting down the Keystone Pipeline hurt it as well. And People are back now. Most people are back driving around, going on vacations the last few summer months and out and about. Whereas in 2020, there was less of a demand for oil and gas because a lot of people were staying home based on the shutdown. So we're in a period right now of inflation, overall inflation, I'd say, across the board in certain products and services, but particularly uh, with crude, we're seeing higher prices. And people still have to drive, still have to fill up their tank of gas, still have to go places so again like i was saying one of the reasons for that is that they stopped drilling and that was a big problem uh for workers people that lost their jobs also again getting back to the idea of supply and demand which is a big factor in prices specifically in many many commodities but we're talking today about crude so i don't know if any of you uh ever read the farmer's almanac but the Farmer's Almanac for 2021 uh, was predicting into, for 2022, a very, very cold winter. So what does that mean? We're going to have more of a demand and possibly a supply issue going into the winter months at the end of 2021 into the beginning of 2022 for heat, okay? So it's not just fuel that we use for driving, it's also to heat our homes. So again, depending on if you have electric, oil, or gas heat, but they're predicting, the Farmer's Almanac is predicting a very, very cold winter in the Northeast. And so, you know, that is gonna mean that there's probably gonna be an increase of prices again, which will mean what? More rallies and higher prices in stocks, like you saw in the Chevron, okay? So let's talk a little bit about supply and demand. I pulled this off of CNBC's site. This is a recent article. Again, this is very topical right now. What's happening with crude? Oil prices could experience an off the chart spike as winter approaches. We're getting into that period right now. It's just started to get colder in New York just this last few days, actually. 
show as winter approaches and OPEC and its allies stick to their earlier pact on oil output, it's going to mean higher prices because Biden, President Biden had asked OPEC to increase oil production. They don't want to do it. Okay, they don't want to do it. This was, that was a couple of weeks ago. So OPEC has been under pressure from top consumers such as the United States, just like I said, and India to add extra supplies after oil prices surged 50% this year. Again, this is all just happening really in the last nine months. Okay, and again, supply and demand, which is pushing up the price. So we have more demand, okay, and we're having a supply issue as well, okay. Both of these things, you can see how they're coming together to create the push up in stocks, in oil stocks and crude. Now, this is a chart going back as far back as I can go, actually. Um, all the way back 20 years in Chevron. You can see the chart here. I squished it so you could go back. I could go back this far. You can really see how the stock has rallied back from and the price of oil has gone up from the 20 years ago. Okay. And where we are right now. Now this this sell off in here again was COVID. Okay. Because again, there was no demand or less demand, I should say people really weren't on the road. I mean, the streets were dead here in New York. This was all March of 2020. So we had the sell off. This is the market, everything sold off. Then the recovery, then another drop down. This was summer of 2020. And then here we see where we're going into 2021. And now here we are in October. So the previous high in this stock is really, when you think about it, not that far away. This easily, easily, easily could get up there in the next three to six months, it could even get up there by the end of the year. Again, if we continue having um, more demand, higher prices, okay, just like we were talking about. So from here to here, isn't that far away? And again, we have the rally in the past week. So that is one of my top picks for strong oil stocks. So getting back to the CNBC article, while many analysts and economists see the rise in oil prices as a function of increased demand, uh, you know, it's really about, for most people, this whole thing that's going on, I'm sure you've heard it on the news, about the disrupted supply chain. Now, what's happening with the supply chain right now? You're having ships come into ports, for example, in New York, it's all the way down at the bottom of the island in Manhattan. It's not close to where I live in Midtown, but ships are backed up. Part of the problem is they're waiting to unload goods because they don't have enough employees. So we have a problem right now with employees at the docks. That's number one. Number two, there's a lot of COVID protocols still at these ports so that people have to wait through the period of time for the COVID protocols. And so the ships are backed up. This prevents people from getting things that they want on time. Like when you order something and you say, well, there's a delay and you call and they say there's a delay. Part of the other problem we're having with supply is what? We don't have enough truckers. There's simply not enough truck drivers right now on the road delivering supplies to people. That's a big problem too. Part of that is why? There's a lot of truckers that are on unemployment. And again, it's COVID. Some people have not wanted to go back to work full time since COVID. Some people are still scared about the virus. Some people are still on long term unemployment. I mean, the last jobs number we had was almost 11 million jobs were available. We have a big number coming out this Friday, which is the unemployment number. They're expecting it to be 5.1%. I don't know what it's going to be. If it's under 5%, the market's probably going to rally or if it hits the number. But if that number is well, well above and higher than what they expect or anywhere near 6%, I think the market's going to tank on Friday. Again, I don't know what the number is. It'll be very interesting to see. But there's a lot of issues going on specifically with supply issues with truck drivers. They just don't have the drivers. I have a friend that works for a big uh, trucking company in the United States. And she said another issue that they're having is when you have a CDL license and you're a driver, you have to pass drug tests. I, I don't know if she said every week or every 10 days, but it's, it's often. Um, and they're failing the tests. Why? Marijuana is legal now in a lot of places. And even though it may be legal, you can't be driving while under the influence and showing cannabis in your system. So it's very interesting what we're dealing with right now where we're having trouble getting uh, goods and services 
and, and, and things all across the country. So don't expect this to change anytime soon. We have a problem until people get back to work, until people want to get back to work. There's definitely enough jobs available. What is preventing people from going back to work? I really don't know. I really don't know. It is definitely a problem and it's creating increased prices, not just in crude, but other things as well. So anyways, one of the, uh, one of the contributors at CNBC was, was uh, comparing crude with whale oil prices. You know, I'm not certain if I agree with that, but I wanted to just put this in here. Uh, she was saying that what's going to happen is that crude is going to lose its value just like people stopped using whale oil. I don't really necessarily agree with that. I think that uh, people are still going to continue to use gas and oil even if they decide to use other cleaner fuels. But this is a, a, this is a chart, again I clipped this from CNBC, going back to the beginning of this year, 2021, this is the oil futures, and you can see how much the prices have gone up. So we were right under $50 all the way up to where we were right at the $75 mark, dollar mark. And this is, you know, really when you think about it in a very, very short time, which is only nine months, okay? So Kathy Wood was the one at, on CNBC was discussing, she was likening crude to the extinction of whale oil. I do not agree with this, but I guess anything is possible. I think if people continue to use oil, the price is gonna to continue to go up. Unless, unless what? Unless OPEC continues to continue supply to increase supply, or we reopen up the Keystone pipeline and we're pumping, uh, pumping crude again. So I think it's a problem overall for people. And again, until we get people back to work and the country is functioning normally again, we're going to continue to see higher prices. So what does that mean for you? Well, you could trade crude. Um, you could trade specific stocks like Chevron, like Exxon, which I'm going to show you the chart here in a minute. And the volatility in them, the fluctuations in price actually makes for good trades. It means you can go long, it means you can short, and you can make money quickly, which as a regular active trader, I like to do. If you're someone that likes to actively trade, you want to get big moves fast. Could be a couple of minutes, could be one hour. It's the idea of profit. And again, as a trader, as an active trader, I can go long and short, and so can you. So you can trade commodities just like a stock. That is a benefit. And again, you can trade the ETF, so you can trade the stock itself, whatever you want to do. What I look at when I'm looking at a day chart, and again, in anything, even something like Chevron or any of the crude stocks, I'm looking for the gap. I trade the gap. There are gap ups, there are gap downs. So what is a gap? A gap is a break in continuity, interruption, hiatus. It's a divergence, a difference, a disparity. That's what a gap is. It's a break. It's a break in what? It's a break in price. What do I mean? Here's the daily chart of Exxon. So let's look at what is a gap. So let's go back here just to, this is yesterday. Well, let's go back to Monday. Well, now let's go back to Friday. This is Friday, okay, this is Exxon, it's XOM, the symbol for Exxon Mobil. Stock closed here, strong. Rallied, had a green day, okay. Then gapped up. Price was higher Monday morning. Remember, this was against the market that fell all day. This stock did not, it rallied. Okay, it was an inverse here of the market on Monday. Then on Tuesday, gapped up again and fell. This is was yesterday the fifth. So these are two gap ups that occurred in this chart this week. One rallied, one sold off. Both you could have made money doing if you did in the right direction. Now let's look at what a gap down is. I'm going to go all the way back here to September. Stock closed here, gap down. Closed here, gap down, fell, boom. You could have shorted this, okay? You could have shorted X on here on this particular day in this gap. And if you did, you made money, okay? This was on the 20th, I think. So I look for gap downs and I look for gap ups, okay? But I will tell you that I prefer to do gap downs. Here's, Here's a gap, gap down, down over here. This, this was way back, back in the middle of August, August okay? okay? Stock close to your gap down, down fell, boom. This, this was, was August 19th. Again, you, you could have shorted this. And, and one, one of the nice things about trading stocks like Chevron or even Exxon is, guess what? 
They have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of volume, okay? Not only do they move and have big moves, they have a lot of volume too, which means you can get filled in easily, you can get in easily, you can get out easily. I mean, if you look at this here, this may not look like much to you. It's around 53.50 and change. Down here, this is buck fifty. That's a good move for a stock. And again, this isn't really that expensive, in my opinion. Chevron's, you know, double the price of this. So that's a good move for a stock at this price point. Now, here is a bigger picture here of Exxon, again, going back at the beginning of 2020 when we had the big sell-off. This is all the way back. This was the start of the whole shebang here, February. Then the closures in March, COVID, COVID, COVID. Market fell too, got the drop. This is the March 20 lows and the rally. Did a retest in here a year ago. This was a year ago, October, November. And look how it's taken off. Okay. Again, this is the beginning of 2021, and it's just continued to go. Now, again, I like Chevron as far as more strength, stronger than this, but this has certainly displayed a lot of strength this year in 2021. Again, why? We're having supply issues pushing the price up and increase in demand, and we don't have enough supply. It's pushing prices up. Okay. But there were gaps where you could have shorted here. I know these are these are tiny. I know I made these bars tiny because I wanted you to see all this. But you could have shorted in here. There are gap downs in here you could have shorted. There's one there in the summer. There's one there in August. That's the one we just looked at. Remember? It's a tiny one there. And then here's this week. A rally. And these were gap ups. This was the end of September and the push up. So where we go from here, I haven't looked at this this morning because I was busy this morning, but where we go from here, take it to the left. Could we get back up in the 70s? Sure, sure we could. Again, they're predicting a very cold winter, no end in sight to what's happening with the supply chain issues. Who knows where this goes, okay? So, the, oh, here's this, I popped this in, this was this morning. So really, really early this morning, here is an actual gap that was happening in Exxon this morning. The stock was gapping down. This is the pre-market, super duper early, you know, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. in here. The price in this was around 60 and change. You can see it. So the stock was down this morning. It was gapping down. So again, what do I do? I look for gaps in stocks, specific stocks or ETFs to determine if I'm going to go long or short. In the case of crude, if you wanted to play crude today, you would have got up in the morning and seen it was down. The market was down this morning too, by the way. We had better than expected economic data out this morning, but we still opened lower this morning initially. Again, big number out Friday. So this is the pre-market of Exxon here this morning, okay? And then here's the bigger chart of this. I went back 20 years in this just to show you. So you can see if you put this next to Chevron, how, you know, even though this has had a lift, even though this has had a nice, nice rally, Chevron is a much, much stronger chart. So the previous highs in Exxon were back, let's just go back here and see when that was. It looks like early 2014, long time ago, really now when you think about it. We're almost in 2022, so seven years ago. Not the case in Chevron, okay? But again, this is has nothing to do with you if you just want to actively trade. If you want to actively trade, you can go long and short and do whatever you want to do on any given day, depending on how the setup is. But if you're looking to do something long term, you know, carrying this through, is there a possibility this can get up in the 80s or the 90s? Again, if we continue to have these issues and the prices keep be pushing higher, yes. We absolutely could. And these numbers are really not that far away because oil can move big. It can move fast, okay? Particularly in a gap. So what is the benefit of trading crude? Volatility. Prices are changing every day. People are using it. Again, it's a very popular commodity. It's a well-traded commodity. Again, lots of volume, lots of volatility. People are trading it. And again, depending on the price point that you want to trade it at, 
You could trade it on the more expensive price point or the lower price point. But volatility is good if you are an active trader. You want to have big moves. You want to have the swings. I don't, you know, if you're watching television and people are saying, oh, volatility, that's only bad if you're talking about your IRA or retirement account or something like that. As far as being an active trader, volatility is our friend. We wouldn't make any money, uh, you know, five days a week or even on a monthly basis if we didn't have volatility in stocks and the market. It would be very difficult to make money if things were just barely moving or moving tiny, tiny, tiny moves or always going with the trend. We want to have swings. Again, the swings could be up, the swings could be down, but either way, it makes for good trading. Now, here is another stock in the scepter. This is COP. I clipped this back here for the last couple weeks just so you could see how this has almost gone straight up vertical. This has had an even bigger rally than even Exxon. So what happened here? Again, we're going back about three weeks. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. Boom. So again, you could have shorted this here on this particular day. That was the 20th. Market fell that day too. I remember that day. It was a good short. Then what happened? Then it rallied, gapped up the following day. This was the 21st of September, about three weeks ago. It's never looked back. It's almost gone straight up every day since. I mean, look how crazy this is. Again, I trade gaps, I play gaps. You could have gone long this anywhere around 58, 59, whatever. You could have done it just as a normal day trade in here, in and out. You could have done it as a swing trade, an option, whatever you wanna do. Look where it went, poof. I mean, this is a big move, even for something like this, even at this price point in this short period of time, okay? Nice lift, nice green bars, nice rally. So that was the play there in this. And again, how is this lifting, lifting, lifting? If you like to follow fundamentals and you like to follow the economy and inflation and what's going on, I mean, it, you don't have to be a rocket science to see really what's happening here, okay? So this is volatile and it makes for a nice play and a long play. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, if you want to make money, if that's the reason that you trade, which I would think that it would be, you need a system that produces results in order to make money trading. So I have that, it's my gap system. It produces results. You can't just willy nilly do stuff all the time. I think people are getting chopped up in the last week, two weeks, particularly the last two or three days in the market, because people don't know whether to go long, don't know whether to go short, don't know what to do. If they're trading market stocks or the market itself, people are frustrated. If you want to have consistent results, you have to use a consistent system. So for me, it is gaps. I'm always looking for the best gap. What do I mean by the best gap? And something like this, I just showed you several charts in Croon, the best move, the biggest move up was that comp. The best gap in the, is the one that works correctly on the day, but not all gaps work. In other words, you can't do gaps every single solitary day in the same stock or any given day, okay? Why do some gaps work and why do some gaps not work? Because it depends on what's happening, whether it's being bought or sold by institutional money. If you're just going with retail traders and what people term a gap fill, that does not work. While you sometimes can make money in a gap fill, it does not work consistently for you to profit as a trader. I'm not sure why people teach gap fills as something that works, but they don't. They may two out of every 10 times, but that's not enough to cover the eight losses that you'd have in the two that you'd win. You need a system in order to train that will make money and have a high win ratio where you have more winners than losers. For me, that is looking at the gap in the pre-market, like for example, where I showed you in the Exxon today, and then going at the daily chart, rating it, I use a checklist I go through in the morning, whatever I happen to be picking and watching and looking at and rating, could be a lot of things, could be a few things, and then I determine if institutional money is buying it or gonna sell it on the day. And then I will take the trade into the open pretty quickly as a day trade or an option, okay? Now, whether you do options or whether you do day trades really depends on the type of account that you have. If you prefer to do options because you don't want to be in and out in trades quick and you are busy and working and you want to just put the options trade in and place it in and buy it and then put a sell order in it, that's fine. You can trade options with a cash account. 
You need a margin account to do day trades. All of these charts that we looked at today, all of these crude charts, you can do options, you can do swing trades, or you could do day trades. I think there's pros and cons to both personally. But one of the nice things about trading crude is that it does have big moves. It can have volatile moves. It can go up and then all of a sudden, then it drops. And again, if you catch it right in the proper direction, that's what makes for profit. And that's what helps you as someone that you can have big wins and make a lot of money. And obviously that's what we want to do. Now this is going back to, this is CVX again, going back a little over a year, year and a half. This is at the beginning of COVID. Okay, so you can see here, we were talking about volatility, all of this. So this was the big drop off. Again, this was COVID, no one expected it, it happened, it hit everything, every stock, the world, the market. Then we had the rally, but then we had all this sell off in here. Again, so we had a situation in 2020, different periods in here where we had, we did, we had lower prices, okay? And then you had the sell off. Now we're getting into the period here where we're having higher prices and the rally. So this is 2021. So this is 2020 and this is 2021. So where will 2022 be? 2022 could be up here in this stock. That's what I was talking about. Could make new highs. What if something happens where gas prices drop? We, we stop having some of the, the demand issues and the supply issues and the supply chain issues. People get back to work. They start pumping more oil. Well, we could drop again back down in here. So you wait to take a position until you see what it does. You can play each and every single day if you want. Okay. You've got to get up in the morning and rate the gap. gap. That's, That's what, what I teach. teach. That's, That's what, what I teach in my class to determine if there's a play there. But, but there clearly was a play in here just in the last couple of days to go along. Okay. The stock. And, and a bunch of these stocks. But COP really was the, the biggest move that went almost vertical straight up. So this was the pre-market I'm showing you here, the gap itself being formed in the morning in the pre-market in CVX. This was down this morning too. This was down this morning too with the market and everything else in the sector. It was hovering here around 104-ish, okay? So this was yesterday, it was the fifth. Here was the rally. You had a gap up yesterday, rally, dropped, closed, boom, down this morning, okay? So if you wanted to look at this this morning and say, well, what should I do with this today? You would look at this, and again, this is a 15-minute chart where I'm showing the pre-market, but I rate it on the daily to determine, do I want to go long this today? Do I want to short this today? What do I want to do? I didn't do anything with this today. I thought the market would be choppy, and I think it will be volatile between today and tomorrow and Friday. And again, that will affect everything, even crude. Here's the bigger chart of this going back 20 years, too. You can see, again, just comparing the strength of this compared to the other ones that I showed you. And again, New highs is not far away, at least not in this one. So the idea of this getting to new highs before the end of even 2021, given all the predicaments that we're in right now, given inflation, given the economy, given the supply issues, given the demand in this, it's really not that far-fetched. So again, what do I look at? I look at the gap. So again, let's just review again, what is a gap? A stock gap for the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. That's it, that's what a gap is. And I have I invented a way to rate the gap that tells me whether I wanna go long or short, that's how I know. Because you can go long gaps, you can short gaps, or bullish gaps or bearish gaps. But again, what is a gap? A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. Simple, okay? But it's determining how to play it and it's determining how to pick it, how to pick which gap to trade. So you need a proven system to find the best gap. Again, the idea of just doing gap fills, first of all, it does not work consistently to make money. And second of all, of course it doesn't work because it would be very easy to do that. And it would be very easy to make money in the market if just doing gap fills worked. No one would ever lose, quite frankly. Any idiot can look at a chart and say, oh, it's gonna fill the gap and go long or short. It does not work that way. It's much more complicated. Just like looking at oil prices and supply and demand and crude is more complicated. These, there's an overlay to everything. And that's why I go through and take the time in the pre-market in the morning, figuring all this stuff out. 
While you can say, well, trading is hard or trading is easy, it depends on where you come from and how long you've been doing this. I personally don't think it's difficult, but knowing what to look at may be difficult if you don't know what to do. Once you know what to do, then it is not difficult. When I first started trading, it was difficult because I didn't know what to look at. I didn't know what to do. Then I created my own system and taught myself, and now it is not difficult. But it does not mean that sometimes I don't have difficult days. Sometimes I do. When would I have a difficult day? When I lose in a trade, when I predict something's gonna happen and it doesn't happen in the time that I want it to. Now, I luckily have a system that has a high win ratio where I predict where something's gonna go and that happens more times than it doesn't. But even I lose in trades, even though I win in more than I lose. With, with trading, with timing, uh, with with commodities, with any stock that you trade, the market overall, timing is a big factor at that, unless you happen to have as much money as Warren Buffett, where you can ride the waves and turns and dips and rallies of something and stay through a position. Most people cannot do that. When I'm day trading, I have to be flat by the end of the day. I have to be out of my trade. And when I'm in an option, I gotta make money in it before the time of the expiration. So time is associated with the option, and time is associated with my day trades, and time is really associated with any trade that you take. So that's such an important factor. I may predict that somebody's gonna go to such and such a point, like we just talked about Chevron, but I'm not in any long-term options in that. Why? Because if it takes X, Y, Z amount of time for it to go back up to the new high, and I'm wrong in the time frame, I could lose in the trade and be right that it goes up and makes new highs. So these things are extremely important. But the nice thing about being an active trader and just an in and out type of trader where we get the move, get in, get out, book the money is we don't have to worry about that. As long as we're in and out quick and we make the money, whatever the move is, if it's 50 cents, if it's a dollar, whatever it is, we can profit, we can make money. Any questions here so far? Just going over, I don't see any. Any questions here yet this morning? We doing good? Anyways, I teach a class. My class is called The Golden Gap, and it's really about high probability. And anything that can put the odds in your favor to trade will give you an edge. So I use a 26-point rating system. The 26-point Golden Gap rating system gives you an edge. It reads the price of the gap and using technical analysis on an advanced level pinpoints which stock to trade that day and in what direction. You can use this for ETFs. Uh, like USO, you can use it to trade any crude stock, any commodity at all, or anything that has a daily chart. The high probability is in the quality and detail in the rating system. I showed you in the morning how uh, crude was down this morning in the gap. It was gapping down, okay? 26 points may seem like a lot of detail. They seem like a lot, but quite frankly, if I could come up with 126 points, I would if it meant I would never lose. For me, it takes me just a few minutes to rate the gap, but I don't rush it. You know, I take my time. I want to make money. I want to see things clearly and accurately. I want to do well, okay? So I focus on what I'm doing. I focus when I get up early. I mean, you saw those charts I clipped this morning. I was up at 5.45 a.m. Sometimes if I'm on TV earlier in the morning, I'm up even before that. You know, I don't like to rush around. I'm a morning person, but then lots of times I'm done by 10 o'clock, 10, 15. Do I offer trade recommendations in a member's area for both stock and options entries? I have the Gap Options newsletter, which is an annual subscription. That, it comes to you via an email. I do not have an options trading room. The live trading room is for day trades, where I'm calling the trades live. The options are as a newsletter format, which comes to you in live time through an email service. If you have questions about that, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com and then I teach the class, okay? So if you want a trial to the trading room for this week, I don't know what we're gonna get Thursday and Friday. There's two more days left in the week. You can email me for a trial if you wanna come see. I do think we're gonna have some good trading Thursday and Friday. Again, it may, it may be quiet today and tomorrow. It may be not till Friday. But again, I don't know if we're going to fall Friday, but we could. We might rally too. That would be unexpected too. You never know. That's what volatility is all about. That's why I wait for the gap. And that's why we play it. And what am I playing? I'm playing momentum. And momentum happens in crude stocks. And that's why, what makes them fun to trade. 
again, and the price points I think are good. So when you're looking for momentum, you're anticipating the stock will have an explosive move. That's what you want, because that's how you're gonna make money. That's how you can take a thousand shares of something. If it moves up a buck, guess what? You make a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars if you have two thousand shares. These big moves happen in one direction and they happen fast, and that's what helps you to make money trading. Again, volatility is good if you're an active trader. Big moves are good, momentum is good. That's what I'm looking for in the gap. I'm trading momentum, okay? I'm looking for the detail in the gap to be able to tell me where the momentum is going to go up or down. And I'm trying to figure all of this out in the pre-market. And that's when I send the options trades out for the most part. The newsletters for the options are usually sent in the pre-market in the morning. Sometimes I send some on the day, but usually they're out before the open. Now you cannot do options trades before the open. You wait until the open, but I usually send them early enough that people know what to do. And then we day trade only on the live day. So the whole philosophy behind my system is to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Two, big moves on the day, which you want, okay? That's the whole point, again, of making money. An early confirmation of the bias in the move and precise entries with follow through. So I teach a complete system. It's all the pieces of the puzzle, how to enter it, where the targets are, how to rate the gap, how to look for it. And you can use my system for crude stocks, for the ETFs, for the market ETFs, for, for anything that trades, basically, as long as it has pre-market activity, you can get it and trade it, go long and short, and you have to be able to look at the daily chart, okay? Any other questions here? So if you're thinking about trading and you want to learn anything about gaps, so what I know, you can email me at Melissa at thestockswitch.com for a trial, but time is money, you know, and you want to invest it in yourself wisely. I think with the whole explosion of Reddit that's happened this year, people, people are taking advice and trains from complete and total strangers, which have no strategy and they don't know what they're doing. That's consequently why many people in these free chat rooms are losing. When you invest in a class, you're investing yourself in what to do. It will pay off in the end. It's the idea, though, of your time, your time and energy in doing trades and, again, in investing in a class and learning information. This is not a trading crude. It was a trade in the marketing, the QQQs. This was one that we did last Monday. We had a beautiful sell-off this Monday. We had a beautiful sell-off last Monday. This was an, uh, an options trade that I called, and I also did a day trade. I did not have the options trade in here, but... Every single trade that I called in the last week was a winner. We were short. We shorted the market. We shorted stocks. We day traded short. We did options. We did puts. We did it all. This may seem expensive. If you have the account size to do it, you could have taken 6,000 shares and made almost 30 grand in one day. This is, this is what I do. Uh, I even think the trading room for this day is on my YouTube. If you go to it, you can hear me make the call. If you don't have enough buying power to take a position like this in the market, and the queues are not cheap right now, you can do it as an option. You could have bought the 365 puts. You could have bought any put price strike under 365. It wouldn't have mattered. You would have made money. This dropped and broke and broke 360. And we continue to fall last week. So this was last week on the 28th. But in the live room, I call the entry, the stop, and the exit, and everything else. This was, again, this day. So what happened here? We closed here, gap down, rally, boom, broke, drop. This was a short. You can see the volume. You can see it. So the market's fun to trade because it has volatility too. Again, just like the oil stocks. And sometimes you get the inverse of that in the market. Now, what if you can't take on margin 6,000 shares of this? You could take 100. You could take 1,000. Even if you took 1,000, the drop in this was more than four bucks. You would have made more than four grand. That's a nice day trade in one day to be able to do something. And again, you can trade prop margin and you can trade retail margin. And if you have questions about that, you can email me. I don't want to get into the specific types of uh, uh, day trading accounts right now, but there are uh, availability for people to trade um, in retail accounts, which you need 25,000, but you can also trade in prop accounts, accounts which you can open up an account, account with as little as 2,500 and get 10 to 1 margin. margin. There's so, so many different types of options out there for people to trade with small money, medium, and big. But, but either way, you have to know what to do. And, and I think the problem is a lot of people just don't know what to do. And you're going to see the chop and the slop in the market yesterday and today where people are questioning going long, going short, and losing and not knowing what to do. You have to be very precise with the decisions that you're making about your money. You want to win in the end. Even though it's October, we're into the end of the year, there's plenty of time left in the year. If you've been losing this year for the first nine months of the year, to turn your year around. Why? Earnings season starts in two weeks. 
and in earnings season we get tons and tons and tons of gaps. Stocks report their quarterly earnings. All of these stocks that I just showed you today, they're going to report their earnings. I don't know the dates. You can look it up and Google it. And they will move and they will gap. Whether or not I'll play them or not, it's too early to say, but I will be looking at them. My uh, YouTube channel is called The Stock Swish. That's me. You can look it up. I own it. And my email is here. Melissa at the stock switch .com. So anyways, let me try to finish up here. I'm actually on TV at 12 o'clock noon, and I have to finish by then anyways, but I'm on Real America's Voice at noon today to talk about the economy, so you can tune in. Tune in if you want to see me and hear me on TV today as well. Um, we've been talking about these things. We've been talking about the economy. We've been talking about inflation. Let's talk more about you. If you want to make money in the market, you can train. You've got to learn how to do it. There is a cost involved with taking my class, but there's value in it, and you're paying for the information, my time, and the value. If you trade the market by yourself, you're, you're going to lose. I lost at the beginning, too. It took me three years to figure out my system, and I, you know, I worked a full-time job when I did it. I'm a very, 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 very determined person. I persevere and I'm even more determined when, when I go through a downturn, which I was at this point in my life when I was losing because I said, wait a minute, I shouldn't be losing. I should be winning. I'm a winner. But it took me longer than I thought to figure out my system. And sometimes that's what it is. Sometimes it takes time for you to find the, find the right person to come to. And it takes time sometimes for you to find the right system. I think not enough people are trading with a system. They think they're using a strategy or a system and they're not. And even if you've been trading for 25 years and losing money in the market, it doesn't mean that you can't turn it around in one day or one weekend or one week. First of all, you can follow what I'm doing. Again, you can come in the room for a trial and email me if you want it. But we're, we're having a good period here. We've had a good year, but I mean, the trades have just been plopping in our lap lately. And it's not even earnings season yet. So even if you're down for the year, you can still turn your year around. It's not over yet. You've got three more months and it's a busy time to trade. Don't forget the debt ceiling uh, is looming October 18th. That's going to create volatility in the market. This trillion, 3.5 trillion stimulus plan they're still talking about. There's so many things that are going on right now. Inflation too. That's going to create volatility in stocks and sectors and the market. And that's going to be opportunity, but you've got to get in the right direction. Again, I go long and short, but I do prefer to short. And the reason I prefer to short is because stocks move fast when they drop. And that's why I prefer to short because I like to be in and out of trades quickly. If this is something you think you want to do, it really depends how much you want it. You can feel free to call me, ask me questions, come for a trial. But I think the tip of the day is if you walk away today with no other information other than this, you should use one strategy to trade, focus on it, and that's how you're going to be successful and make money. But I think education is important. You're listening to many, many people today. Invest as yourself as a trader. You will not regret it. Again, I teach a 26-point rating system for gaps. It's a full two-day course. The class is this weekend, October 9th and 10th. You can come for a trial this week if you want. You must email me for the trial information. The class is online, and the cost of the class is $6,999, and you can email me for forums if you want to sign up. Thank you. Thank you, David. I make it in time for my TV spot. Made it in time for the next person. Any last-minute questions here? Websites, www.thestockswish.com. Melky asked a bunch of questions. He's the only one awake today. <laughs> Melky's had his coffee. Let's quickly look at the market quick. Can you see the market here? Or did I have to stop and put it up? I'll just give you two minutes here what I think of the market. Yeah, I think you'll have to stop your share and uh, oh, that's share. Okay. That's, that's all right. I'll just tell. I'll just tell you really quickly here. You know, we got down this morning uh, early, super, super, super early. Then we rallied, had good data. Then we opened lower. We still opened lower. Then we dropped. Then we rallied. This is really uh, trying to hang on. But at the end of the day here, we've got four more hours left in the day. I know there's people that probably went long this morning because we rallied this morning. But I mean, it's, it's, it looks like to me that we're poising ourselves to fall off a cliff. So be careful if you're long today and make sure to take profits if you did go long. I did not go long today because that's not how I'm seeing this here. But the reality is that you know, you've got to know what you're doing when you're trading. Gap fills don't work. Consider what I said and if you have questions, email me. And thanks for having me.